Roughly 42,000 veterans have spinal cord injuries, according to the federal government. Since 2015, the Rewalk exoskeleton has been getting vets back on their feet. Brittany Elliott is one of those veterans. A catastrophic accident left her paralyzed from the upper chest down. But with the help of her robotic exoskeleton and the guiding hand of her father, Morgan, she's able to walk again. Earlier, Elliot told CBS News about access to this technology and how it's often being blocked. Brittany and Morgan Elliott, thank you for speaking with CBS News. Brittany, you're a veteran of the Marine Corps. Yes, you were medically retired. And then what happened? I was um, in a head-on collision with a drunk driver and paralyzed from the chest down. And how old were you at that point? 24 years old. 24. So you've had a real journey to get to where you are today, yes, standing yes, here in the CBS News studio. What difference does the exoskeleton make to you? Um, it's life-changing for me. I spend my life in a chair and thought that that was going to be the only option for me. Exoskeleton showed me that there is possibility to get outside the chair and walk. Um, even better, I can climb stairs and curbs in it as well now. So that's been truly life-changing when you navigate a city. It's much easier to do it standing than in a chair. Of course. What was it like to stand up for the first time again after you thought that you would never stand again? Emotional. I almost passed out because my blood pressure wasn't sure how to evaluate with uh, being back mm -hmm. to my feet, but I cried because I never thought I would see the day. I mean, a lot of joy in, in those tears, right? Absolutely. So, Dad, I want to bring you in. What difference has the exoskeleton made in the life of your daughter? Oh, it's made an amazing difference. She, her mental and physical health has improved greatly. And she's so much happier and so much more alive and willing to go out and be part of the world. And what difference has it made to you as her primary caregiver? It really makes the days go by very quickly because she likes to be up, she likes to be moving, and the days go by so quickly because she doesn't ever want to stop. How long did it take you to get access to this technology uh, through the VA? So I completed a study with the VA in 2018, but I did not get my own device until April of 2022. Wait a second. It took four years for you to get this device. Yes, ma'am. What explains the delay? There wasn't much explanation from VA. Well, that's not very satisfactory. No, ma'am. It was a tough battle, and the goal is to make sure no other veteran ever has to face that kind of struggle. So what does it look like for veterans today who are trying to get this technology? Are they still fa facing blocks and financial obstacles? They are facing it, but um, I hope that's all going to change very soon with the STAND Act. Now, what is the STAND Act? So the STAND Act um, is going to ease access for veterans. It's going to mandate that veterans are um, reached out to by the VA for their annual evaluation in the spinal cord injury, which we're supposed to have um, anyway. If you had to pay for this yourself, could you afford? No, ma'am. You couldn't? No, no way. VA does cover them, though. My, I got my device 100% by VA. It's just getting through the hurdles to get it paid for by VA. So the STAND Act would um, facilitate and accelerate this process? It's going to mandate that they actually talk to veterans about that and that they make sure that they trial them, and it's also going to um, tie that back to the VISN leaders. Um, it's a very big deal, and I'm hoping that it makes access for veterans easier. So, Dad, I want to bring you back in. Um, what was it like to wait four years for this technology? It was very frustrating, very frustrating, because I was part of the study with her, and I got to see the improvements in her life, and then they just took it away and said, no, you can't have it. So it On what very, basis? They would never tell us for sure why. It would have been terrible if she hadn't gotten her own device because it made such a difference in her life and her health that to, to have that exposure and then have it yanked away was just very cruel. Are there a lot of veterans out there who don't have access to an exoskeleton? The majority of veterans don't have access to an exoskeleton. So what are we talking about, thousands of veterans? No, the, the community is a pretty small community, but we're still talking with a couple hundred veterans hundreds. that are looking for access to these. It sounds like you, you weren't able to necessarily get the support or other veterans are not getting the kind of support they need. That's absolutely correct. I had to travel all the way to Jackson, Mississippi um, for a doctor to give me the chance to have my own device. And I'm so thankful to him every day. Hundreds of miles, right? Yes, 10 and a half hours from home. Not a lot of veterans will have a caregiver who's able to give that kind of time, right? Right. Very, 
very true. Yeah. Well, I, I really want to commend you for making this your new sort of a brand of service, right? Isn't that what it is for you? I call it my mission. Yes, uh -huh. ma'am. Yeah. It is my mission to expand access to all my veterans that are eligible for this technology to have access to it. Well, on this Veterans Day weekend, I want to thank you for speaking with CBS News and wish you all the best in your efforts to get this technology to the veterans who need it. Thank you so much. Thank you.